Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to part 21 of my full platinum walkthrough for Dark Souls 2, Skull of the First Sin. Okay, this is it. You can see how long this video is. This is the third and final DLC that we need to go to. Well, there's only three. But we're going doing the old Iron King DLC. We're not even going to do the whole area and this video is still an hour and 20 minutes. Um, I've made it as linear as possible, gone to get exactly what we need and that is it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is gone back to Blightstone, um, Brightstone, sorry, no, Seldora, whatever, that place. And we're going to go see this guy and he's going to sell us a ring, the Curse Bite Ring. There's a couple of places in this DLC where Curse is a problem, so having the Curse Bite Ring can really help. It will cost you 9,000. Uh, if you're not particularly bothered about sort of being cursed and not being human anymore for a moment, then that's up to you. If you've got plenty of human eff effigies, then that's okay. But if you want it, go and get it. It's definitely going to help in two specific places. Now you can see at the top there, we're getting smelter wedges times six. That's the first thing we're going to get. To get one of the spells from this DLC, we need to get the soul of Nassandra, uh, Nadalia. Sorry, Nassandra. Nadalia. And to get the soul of Nadalia, we need to get the 12 fragments of the soul of Nadalia. To get a fragment to get a fragment of the soul of Nadalia, we need to get a smelter wedge and plunge that into the heart of one of these beings, and that's going to give us one of the souls. And then once we have them all, it'll automatically combine and we'll get the soul, which means we can go and buy the spell. So that is the main sort of thing with this one. That's why it takes so long. The three other spells that we need to get, there's four in total, uh, are very easy, like they have been in the previous DLCs, we can just run and get them, that was a bit of a mess. So i just try and force my way through with this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, the th other three are very simple, we get them along the way, but uh, one of the souls is hidden behind one of the hardest bosses in the game, and then one of the smelter wedges is hidden by the, probably the second hardest boss in the game. And we need to go right to the bottom of the area and fight both of them, to get these two extra things so that's what stretches it out unfortunately there's no other way to get this uh, this spell so you're probably wondering why I'm here in the Iron Keep and that's because this is where the DLC starts well you probably weren't running you probably guessed that but this is where the DLC starts so we're gonna run past everything and uh, go here we got the key for this place earlier on it was where the two fire salamander looking things were we got the key so we're gonna warp here and then this is where we use the key on this door here and this place looks amazing. Like the other two DLCs, this really does. It's like all of a sudden they just turn this game into a proper Dark Souls game <laughs> with the DLCs. Uh, yeah, lots of lifts and moving parts in this one. It's all very vertical because it is a tower. Um, and you'll see what I mean about that in a moment. That place. I mean, look at that. You, you walk across a giant chain to get to it. What more do you need? So up here is going to be the first six smelter wedges. So we get six at this point, and then we get another four, and then we get another one after defeating Sir Alon. So yeah, just pick the six up here, and then move on. We're going to get the first soul of Nadalia piece straight away now, uh, and you sort of an intro to what you can expect anyway. So yeah, be careful on this chain. It's not very slippy or anything, but obviously you can fall off pretty damn easily. And then we're going to get to the first bonfire. There's an item there. I, I do skip a lot of items and things. I will obviously be picking some stuff up along the way. But I'm not doing everything. It would be twice the length of the video. We even skip one of the bosses that we don't need to do as well. Um, a blue smelter demon. I'm sure you're really upset about not having to fight one of those again. So yeah, I've, what I did there was get rid of my bow. So um. Um, as light as possible, so my stamina is coming back as quickly as possible. So this is what we need to do. This is what the smelter wedges are for. We need to plunge it into the hearts of these things. Now these things come in three different forms. They always look like this, but one will do that sort of uh, firestorm attack. Uh, one will be just heal other enemies around it. That's quite an annoying one actually. Uh, and one will have uh, a sort of a an aura about it, and the whole area around it will be um, cursed. And you'll get cursed, obviously. So there's three different versions, but essentially we need to kill 11 of those things. Dexterity ring there, that gives you extra strength. No. <laughs> dexterity. I think it's five points of dexterity if you're wearing that ring. Um, 
yeah, the final soul is from the Fume Knight. So there are actually 11 of those things we need to kill. Uh, four of which are around the Fume Knight and then the Fume Knight. So there's five total around the Fume Knight boss fight. So we're going to drop down and uh, try and make this as quick as possible. I do actually die a few times in this one. Just carry on. <laughs> uh, obviously I do cut it all out. But yeah, there's some tricky places in this one. Uh, these are the main enemies. These sort of skeleton looking things. Undead with big axes. There's ones with swords. There's one with shield obviously. Uh, they're very easy to kill. Should only be two or three hits. But then uh, they also hurt a lot when they hit you. Uh, you, see, you can see these little people in the ash here on the floor. If you run over every one of those that you see, some of them do have items in them. Pretty good ones as well sometimes. So you, yeah, these guys in a group are very dangerous, especially if you've got the axe ones, because they can just take care of you. As uh, The ones, you saw the one at the back there do the jump. Uh, and then they have the triple combo as well. They don't mess around. You can backstab them as well. So that's always a good thing. Bit of rogue water here before we go in. Blackweed balm in a minute. I don't think we've seen that before. I think that's only here in this place. It's another one of those use... I don't know in what situation you would use it. It's a consumable that gives you intelligence for... I think it's like 45 seconds you gain intelligence. Like 5. Maybe to do extra damage. I don't know. Uh, but you get 1. I mean... What, in what situation are you going to use that? I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to use it. That's the that's the point. Uh, Scythe, there's a lot of actual plus weapons here. There's a Scythe plus 7. There's a Sastus plus 8 we get later. There's a few others. Prism Stone, that's pretty useful. <laughs> not. Um, Titanite Slab. I mean, we've got we're swimming in these things at this point. So I'd be very surprised if you need this Titanite Slab. But there you go. So at the bottom of this ladder, you're going to see one of these things straight away. Do not go and attack it. Just leave it. Because moving forward, a lot of these skeletons will come out of the floor. Uh, again, you don't want to get surrounded by these. You're going to see in a moment to the right-hand side. What it did then was it set off a um, these guys. It sort of unfroze them. And these are stronger versions of the previous ones. You can see they're grey as opposed to like the gold or bronze colour. So they do take more hits. So don't move forward because you'll wake up a load more and you don't want a load of these guys because they're not as easy to kill and they hurt a lot more as well. And here's Dance of Fire, our first pyromancy. So I told you the others are extremely easy to find. So just three more to get. Obviously two of which are out in the world. One of is not. It's tied to one of the souls. Yeah, you can see they've all woken up now. Just try and keep your distance. Try and separate them. We will be using backup saves quite often in this video as well for certain sections. We'll get to a certain point and just before we run in, we'll do a backup save because there are some tricky rooms and things like that. I think this is actually the only one that does what this thing did, which was actually uh, get more enemies to appear. So, so there are actually four. I forgot this one does that. Makes the extra enemies appear. So there's actually four types of those things. But it's uncommon that version. He didn't see me at all there. Yeah, so there's lots of possibilities of falling to your death as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of uh, lifts and things like that. And switches with doors. It's quite Metroidvania, this one. This, this one. We've got to go to a certain place to open up. The, the main place. We need a key. So yeah, what, as you go down here, there's going to be a guy who's going to appear where I'm stood right now. So keep an eye on that. There he is. And there's another one going to come up from the bottom as well. You don't actually have to come down this way. There's just a few items in a, a really not so secret door. These ones aren't too bad with the halberd. Nope, we're going to get it. Nope, <laughs> it turned around. Lois Talisman, we really don't need those at this point, but there you go. And then the most obvious illusionary wall has ever been. <laughs> and here, in here, the most important thing is probably the soul vessel, two of them. If you want, need to restat your stats or reset your stats, then you can do that. 
and this one. Okay, let's carry on. <laughs> Get to the good stuff. So yeah, I'm not I'm not going off branching off doing loads of side stuff. There is a lot more to do than we actually do. But we do finish the DLC, weirdly. So these are another thing in this place. There's lots of gunpowder barrels. And you're going to see what happens if gunpowder meets fire. I'm sure you can guess. But yeah, they will. that will happen. So these guys don't really attack you. The ones carrying the barrels. But you can kind of uh, herd them in your favour. Which you're going to see me do later on. Uh, they can get fed up with you eventually and start slamming the barrel on you. Uh, here's another new enemy type. You can see what it's doing. Its bow and arrow is up in the air. It can shoot over obstacles and it will do that. <laughs> uh, this one can die, but some of them don't die. They come back to life. So just as long as you get souls from killing something, that means it's dead. If you don't, then it can come back to life. This one's dead now because I forced those guys into the fire. But yeah, they're, they're probably the more annoying enemy. The fact that they come back to life as well. So we will be running past some of those later on because there's obviously no point trying to kill them. No, we just can't seem to find that, that sweet spot on these ones. Yeah, after this we've just got a couple more videos of this single first playthrough. And then we're going to go do New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus. A lot quicker than we did this one, don't worry. It's not going to be 20 odd videos for, for each playthrough. A lot quicker. I may even see if I can condense them into one. Maybe do a, a three hour video each. Well, one will be three or four hours. Uh, one will be a, a couple of hours. We'll see. I'm, I might spread them out though to make it more uh, digestible. Easier to digest. So here's one, the second bonfire. There is another one. There's another two actually. Well, this is kind of, we're kind of in the main area now. We can unlock doors by coming different ways and doing all different shortcuts. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to go to where we need and that's it. So there's lots of lifts in here. We basically need to turn this place on so it's all moving and we can uh, get to the uh, areas we need to. And to do that we need a special key. Here's some more of these. So I'm going to force him down this trapdoor. He'll come in helpful later. Well, in a moment, actually. Nothing down here. I thought there was an item down here. It's not. It's a door. Yeah, no. It's one of the doors you open later on. So ignore that for a minute. I'm going to come around here for another new enemy type. And we're going to use these exploding barrels to our advantage. Can take a minute. It, this is going to... I'm going to show it. It can take a minute to get this right. But it... It's probably worth it rather than dropping down into this place. So try and force these. So there's a trap door there on the left. And then you can force them down the ladder as well. It'll do the same thing. You can see there the other enemy off in the distance. I actually really like the design of this enemy. And it's this enemy that I died to maybe twice in this video. Uh, it's a big bruiser giant thing. Kind of like the smelter demon. Its mid riff is on fire, but it spurts out from its left and right, so basically underneath its armpits kind of thing, uh, and it alternates. So you have to remember which way it has done it last, uh, and you need to dodge appropriately. But there's also a lot of other enemies down here, plus the um, the Nadalia soul thing, that's going to start doing the firestorm attack. Plus, there's one that's throwing firebombs from the top. So just running down into this area can be a real stupid idea, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a backup save. Uh, and I'm going to force, try and force these barrel guys into the big guy. They can Obviously, he's got fire coming out of his arms, so uh, he can set them off. So I'm just going to try and, no, completely miss that. I thought I'd get the drop, but get, didn't get it done. So once everything starts moving, go back up and then just kind of wait it out. It can take a moment, but it will happen. So you'll see this guy will start pacing around, and he's going to hit this one here, there. That's half of it. So he just needs to do it on two. And once the big guy's done, you can take care of the others pretty simply. So I'm just going to wait around a moment and see this one going towards him. 
Go on. He gets away with it because his because uh, the sides alternate with the the fire. Like if it was that, if it was the uh, the left side, then it would have got it. There now, do we get it? No. Don't worry, it does it in a minute. I'm just gonna, not going to just stay up here. I think we get it mm, on the next one. It's left hand side. Do we? Oh no, the right. So next time it goes back to the left. Yeah, next time it goes to the left, it's stood right next to it now. There we go. Right. <laughs> Definitely worth waiting for. It will happen eventually. But you do need to go down and sort of force it to start with. Now watch out for the, the one for throwing the black firebombs from the top. Uh, you don't want to be stood next to any of the barrel guys. Because, uh, yeah, they're obviously going to kill you. He's up in the top. In the fenced off bit, you can't get to him. Not quite sure what he was doing, but never mind. Uh, yeah, this one's going to do a firestorm thing again, so stay away until it's finished and then go and uh, stab it. And that's going to be part number three. Also, flame quartz ring is in this room. Uh, it's the plus three version as well, so it's going to increase your fire resistance by quite a lot if you have it. There it is. Right, moving on. So yeah, this area is, is yeah, we're definitely here a lot longer than we were uh, in the previous DLCs, unfortunately. So yeah, here you get a proper look at one of these guys. So this one does die. You see, I got the souls from it, so it definitely did die. Lots of decent upgrade materials around this area as well, so it's always worth having a quick look around. Or definitely just picking up what's around you, not necessarily going exploring. Nothing else we actually need. I collect everything that's in important. So you can see another new enemy type at the top there. Uh, it's like a sorcerer. Lightning does miracles. Uh, its main attack is, uh, you can see that ball, it's sort of firing that will just sit in place and then do electric damage. So as long as you kind of walk past it or let it go pa uh, behind you, you'll be fine. There's another one, they just appear out of nowhere because they come out of the ash. So you need to be aware that they can appear out of nowhere. So yeah, just wait for it to go and then get them. They, they can disappear as well. Uh, and appear, reappear behind you. So that's another thing they do. Plus, they have some daggers. So lots of fun with those ones. They are easy to kill, though. So that's uh, that's all right. Down. We'll have a quick run around to scout this area because it's right next to where we are anyway. Lots of uh, souls, soul items. And obviously these guys are going to follow you anyway. So th luckily they do stagger, so that's one thing in your favour. Because in the previous DLCs the enemies just didn't seem to stagger ever. But these ones are quite weak, but they do hit hard. So yeah, lots of these sort of bodies on the floor. Whoop, where did he come from? <laughs> lots of these bodies on the floor. Uh, yeah, just what? Yeah, you can see it's uh, disappearing there. That's a nice trick they like to do. But the butcher knife's gonna come in handy with these crowd control situations. See, so, yeah, if you you break all these down, you'll find some of them will have items. They will be the same ones that I get them from. So this one, and that one, and no others. So we're going to go get another bonfire now, and this is going to be the main, main area. This is going to be where we turn the place on and get the whole place moving. This one here. So in there is where we're going to put the key, that podium there. But just around here is the bonfire, and then we're going to go back the way we just came and get one of these soul pieces. So I've just showed you where this is so you can uh, rest up. Obviously, fix a weapon if you're using the same one as me. You're going to need to do it often. 
and we'll go back. We don't have to fight all those guys we just did. Just one, maybe two, if the archer follows you like he does with me. And then we're going into the first curse area. So this soul Nadalia thing is going to be the cur one of the curse ones. So we will be putting that ring on. And it really does help. If you try and do this without the ring, you will get cursed regardless. You can do it without uh, getting cursed if you're wearing the ring. If you're not bothered about dropping a little bit of health right now, then yeah, you don't need to bother. But uh, I'm going to do a backup save as well. It's very easy to die down here. So just do that quickly. Yep, the others have gone by. So uh, we'll put the ring on. Just switch it for this HP. The ring of restoration. Don't need that for now. And we're going to do a, a kamikaze run straight for the Nadalia soul. So the curse goes away. Now there's going to be a an invasion here. Spirit uh, Maldron the Assassin. Uh, don't worry about it, just ignore it, as long as you don't go to the left-hand side. So drop down onto this bit first, roll down here, go onto this bit, drop down, turn around, look for it, there it is, and uh, go straight for it <laughs> and put the smelter wedge in to get rid of curse. Now, if done correctly, you won't get curse doing that, but if, you did, uh, if your drops were a bit too long, you may have a bit of damage on you, but you should be okay. Uh, this guy's the only one that will follow you. And once he's down, you kind of can rest for a minute. Now, there are other enemies in this area. But uh, you're free to do it at your own leisure now. And I'll just switch that ring back because we don't need the curse ring anymore. Where's it gone? There it is. Alright, down here, you obviously you're going to come... The reason I came down here is that you would naturally come down here. And I want to show you that there is an ambush down here. There's going to be three of the the normal enemies. One of those guys is probably going to come down from the stairs. So remember, they do only take two or three hits each, but they really do. In a group, they can uh, really put short work. Because they've got such long combos as well. So three three hit combos. Like, Look how much damage that did then. That was ridiculous. <laughs> it's these you need to worry about. The halberd ones. They're easy to dodge, but if they do make contact, it hurts. And all there is down here is Pale Stone uh, and Magic Great Sword. Uh, majestic Great Sword, <laughs> Great Sword, should I say. Uh, nothing I'll ever use, but I thought I'd show you because you might naturally wander down here. And then that's all we need from this area we can leave. Uh, yeah, so there is that invader up top still. I'll show you in a minute where he is. As long as you don't go near him, he won't, he'll leave you alone. But if you do want to take him on, there is a couple of bonfire aesthetics in it for you. But we're not going to do that. There's a couple more still alive on that first sort of middle cog halfway up. They'll be throwing the fire bombs the whole time. Once you're back at the top, if you turn here, you can see him just tucked behind that wall there. And in that chest over there is bonfire. I think it's two, two or three. Um, we don't need them, so we'll leave them. But if you need them, go and get them. And now we'll carry on and try and uh, light this place up. Get it going. So you can see over there there's an item, that's the Spell Quartz Ring plus 3. That will increase your spell resistance by quite a lot. So if you know an enemy or a boss is going to be very spell heavy, then uh, equip that. Can't use the bonfire. Now the reason it says that is because that invader's still around. Uh, if that's the case, then just go where I'm going to go now, just carry on a bit. Uh, he'll disappear and then you can rest at the bonfire, come back and rest. But this is the way we need to carry on anyway. So all these gates are going to, apart from that one on the left, the rest of them will open up as we go through. So I'm going to go down here, and this is where he's going to disappear. So yeah, he's gone now, because we've moved far away enough. So I'll just go rest, mainly to heal the weapon more than me. 
because I know there's a lot of fights coming up. At the top, you can see we're getting the uh, the gauntlets and leggings from Katarina. It's in a really secret place, actually. Uh, we don't get the main body of the armor, so if you want to look like an onion knight, <laughs> apart from the middle, then you can do that. So these flame uh, horse heads, whatever they are, you can hit them and move them along. And there's going to be guys with barrels around. Plus, you've got those sorcerers around. So every time you hit one of these sort of um, gates these fences you can open it so make sure you do because it means you don't if you do die you don't have to come all the way back through so get rid of that one it's a bull isn't it it's not a horse and then there's going to be two around here uh, actually three around here one's going to uh, magically appear here on the left first hand Yeah, make sure you hit this uh, this gate, get that open as well. It means you don't ever have to do that first bit again. And it's going to open up some of these ones with barrels. So I'm going to show you where these leggings are and the gauntlets. But uh, the main reason I'm using this is to damage the, the enemies. They can get a bit stubborn, these guys, sometimes. The AI is a bit weird on these kind of force them down. You're going to have to do some dodging to get this done. You don't need to do this, don't worry, you could just run and hit the source. There's one in front of the fire and then there's one behind. Now if you can manage to get two barrels down, you'll kill the one in front. Uh, maybe even one will do it if you're lucky. And obviously the spikes on the wall, they hurt as well, so watch your dodging. But as long as those projectiles come past you, then it's the they're not going to get you. As long as you keep moving forward, you'll be fine. I'm trying to herd these things. Jeez, like herding cats. Go, 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 go. Keep going. No, don't turn. <laughs> no. Oh, and he's trying to hit me now. He's had enough. Oh, it's because he's taken damage of him. Yeah, finally. So, <laughs> that was close. I think the sorcerer is still alive. No, don't. No, not this time. Yeah, so that was good. <laughs> Just walk through the fire. Uh, yeah, hit that back. Where's the source we're gone? There you are. So there are two of them. That's the reason I sent down. Now, don't run down around the corner behind me. There's one of the big guys. I'm going to do that in a minute. But break this wall. This wall broke from the explosion. And this is where the, the armor is, if you want it. This guy's not giving up either. He's the one that took damage on the spikes. Uh, right now, full disclosure, I did die to this guy because I completely messed it up. So I did die, but all I've done is just, we're in exactly the same place. I haven't gone anywhere. I've gone round the corner. I died to him, so I quickly ran back. Got my souls, that's what you saw happen then. Uh, yeah, so fighting these guys, they are fairly s straightforward. Big, slow attacks, but um, obviously the armpits are letting fire out. And it does alternate, so you need to remember which side was which. And uh, dodge accordingly. That's not the right side. So this side is safe this time. So stay on this side. They do have a follow... Uh, what they do is they have a really tricky uh, move set. In the fact, it looks like they've finished, or maybe even that they got staggered, but they're not. They're winding up a second attack, and that's what can catch you out sometimes. And it does with me still as well. You think you're safe to go in, but you're not. And then they'll just unleash a, an attack, and it really does hurt. <laughs> so, run down here before we go and get what we, we came for. And this is going to open up the ultimate in the shortcut. This is going to take you right back to the bonfire. So you don't ever have to deal with that area again, ever. Dried root, we know that's four now. So there's the bonfire. That's where we came down originally. So you can just jump, jump down here. And uh, go and get what we need to do. So yet another new enemy type coming up in a minute. But they are only in this area. So yep, we're going across another chain to another tower. And uh, these guys explode. But they're not the annoying type of exploding enemy. Uh, you need to set them off. So you can see it here. What they do is... I'm trying to get him to do it, but he wasn't having any of it. 
Uh, they like to do a big lunge towards you, uh, so have your shield up. Uh, if you hit them three, uh, I think it's about three times, so it's about there you go, you just, just see it about to happen. Uh, about three quarters of the health, once you've got that down, they'll uh, go to for the, an explosion. You can see it sort of go orange, and it'll explode, so get the hell out. And if one is next to another one, it'll set the other one on fire, and that one will automatically come after you and try and explode next to you. So you're going to see that happen. That was the, the big lunge they like to do. So there, he's going to explode. No, I don't know. That's the first time I've seen one not explode. That was quite weird, actually. So I'm going to try and set it off now. There we go. So he's going to explode. There's one behind him. It's going to set him on fire. The fire does do damage to you. And then that one will try and explode um, as soon as, ne as it's next to you. And there's basically a, a chain reaction can happen if there's lots of them. And uh, there will be later on. There'll be lots of them in one room. But four quick hits should take them down. Petrified Dragon Bone. Don't need any more of these. You shouldn't need any more of those by now. And all the way down. We're going to get invaded again. Usually a fairly straight so uh, straight sword, I was going to say. Straight forward uh, NPC quick sword Rachel. Um, can hit fairly hard but pretty slow as well. And easy to backstab, although I do make a right mess of it now. You can see they do take quite a lot of damage from her attacks. Yeah, make a mess of this. <laughs> I couldn't, I, yeah, I think I chase around and get two failed backstab attempts. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just try and go pound for pound and uh, try and make it. And we'll do only just, though. Right, there's doors all the way around the outside of this area. You can see them all the way around. So starting from the gaps, there's a gap in the floor here at this back wall. So starting from that one, go through this one. This is the way we need to go. There's going to be two of the exploding guys behind. One might explode straight away, which he did. The other one will be on fire and will come after you and try and explode. You can light these torches as well if you put them next to them <laughs> like that. Come on, explode. There we go. So that's the first door. And then the next door after that. So this is the first door here. This is the way we need to go and we'll go that way in a minute. That's where the ladder is. So from that one, you can ignore that door and this door. I'll show you why you can ignore. This is basically one room with two doors. So if you use this second one, you can look around and see there are some there, but they just ignore them. And then in this room is uh, an important, this is another hex. Definitely need this recollection. Uh, once you pick up one of the items, this guy's going to appear and disappear and then reappear <laughs> there you go, get recollection, so that's an important thing, that's one of the main reasons we're down here and then this room you can ignore entirely I now know this because I have checked and there's nothing in this well there's an enemy but there's nothing worth opening the door for he'll explode, I think there's just one in here, I think he's going to explode now see I just Double check, no, nothing in there. You knew that, I don't know why you looked. Right, through the first door, and down the ladder. And we're going to get the Scorching Iron Scepter, which is essentially a key. And sets the whole place going. So around here, I'm going to run around to this door, and I'm going to do a backup save. Probably advise that you do one as well. We've come quite a ways since the last bonfire. This room is full of those exploding guys. I think there's about six, maybe eight. And they're going to set off in a chain reaction. Initially, they won't come after you. But once you grab the scepter, they will. So it's best just to set them off. Yeah, it looks like there might be eight, actually. So yeah, they're just going to chase you down. Once they get close enough, they will try and explode like that there. And they do damage to each other, so they will keep taking damage from each other. So you can just kind of stand back, force the explosion, and just back away. Little bit of health, come on. Right. 
Now we're clear, Scorching Iron Scepter. We're going to take this back to that big main room and put that in and uh, start the whole place off, meaning we can use the lifts, go up and down, and go and uh, do some more interesting stuff with boss fights, etc. I think this is the last one. I don't think there's any more after this one. Yeah, so big old lift ride coming up, and we'll go all the way back round and... Um, drop down back to the start so there's no need to go the way that we came any time now <laughs> there we go, I should have cut this bit out uh, yeah, I just wanted to make the video even longer apparently drop down here and we'll be right back at the start we can just run across the tray I, I suppose technically you, you could feather out if you wanted to but we'll run it back it's quicker quick enough but you can if you wanted to once you have the scepter you can just feather back out Okay, let's get this party started now. Let's get this place moving. So, rest in there. Obviously, fix my weapon up again. And then we're going to put this in. The second curse room is behind me, but we don't have the key for it yet. We need to get a yet another key, the tower key, which we can now get because we've put this in. Everything's going to wake up, and it's all going to light up. And there's going to be lifts moving up everywhere now. So there's lots of places you can go that I don't go uh, by jumping off lifts at different points and things like that. But I'm not going to go finding everything. it take forever. Just got what we need and that's it. So this one we're going to go up first and we're going to get the last four um, smelter wedge. Or the, the last four that you can find without fighting a boss. So just six, four and then one. So eleven in total. So you should recognise kind of where we are here. We're back up at the top. So I'm going to take this up. Now behind me is one of the boss fights through the door. We don't have the key yet. Uh, we'll do that boss fight last. I don't think you can actually do it before fighting the Fume Knight anyway. But I've always done it after, so that's the way we're going to do it. Quite a few enemies in here, so you want to push that round. And uh, be aware that there's lots of these barrel guys around as well. And there we go. Always come in handy when they kill others. Lacerating knife, that, that can cause bleed. I'm not ever going to use them though, to be honest. <laughs> We're actually going to use this one to try and kill most of the enemies in this place. Because there's a lot upstairs. A lot of enemies up here. So don't just go running through, there's a lot more than you think there are. Unfortunately, the barrel guys are not going to do anything. You could probably dodge roll through the flames, then go and wake everyone up, and then dodge roll through and then hit the statue and it would blow them all up, potentially. Sounds a bit dangerous though. So what I do instead is bring them down here try and sort of stand in front of the fire so it forces them to do some attack or something uh, gets them to stand in the fire for a bit but they all have to come through it at some point so they'll take some amount of damage from it unless like that one walks through it as it stops I'm running out of stamina here <laughs> no that's probably when you die the most, isn't it? When you run out of stamina. And you don't have that little bit just to get the hell back out. That was good. <laughs> so apparently we're just going to run through the fire now. I don't want him to. He's going to follow me now. I think he does actually and blows up. So yeah, check these alcoves. Make sure there's no more enemies lurking around. And then I'm going to 
do a pathetic roll through here again <laughs> and get the smelter wedges. So that's all we need from up here. We'll be back later. There he goes. He followed me and exploded. We'll be back up here later to do the boss fight. Uh, but that's a separate way. You can see <laughs> that horrendously small writing in the top. Um, the most important thing is the tower key that we're going to go and get now. But there's also, in case you can't read it, there's charcoal pine resin, twinkling titanite, human effigies, titanite chunk, wilted dust herb, wilted dusk herb, skeptic spice, large soul of a nameless so soldier. Lots of stuff in one area. We're basically going and getting the tower key. That's all you need to know, really. So go back down, this is where we started. I'm just going to rest up quickly because uh, saves using repair powder later on. And then we're going to take the lift down. That was good timing. And then if you take the other lift down on this place, if you go off to the right hand side, that will take you to the boss. This gate, no, we don't need to go there yet. <laughs> We don't actually need to go there at all, but that the tower key opens that that we're going to get in a minute. So there's going to be three of those big armpit fire guys, but you can fight them one at a time. Just don't move around too much. Now you can get these barrel guys out here to try and help if you want, but it can also be dangerous. Uh, it's best just to try and learn these guys and circle them lots that's the wrong side I was hoping you'd fall off them but no such luck I suppose yeah you see what I mean it's a follow up and then there's a triple as well there's another follow up and that's the sort of thing that can catch you out when it looks like because they can stagger they usually will with the penultimate hit uh, that you do just before they die they will get staggered you can see it there, so it looks sometimes like they're going to stagger, but they're not. They're, they're winding up. So there's the one in the middle, so I didn't move around there too much. And then there's this one. You can actually skip this one if you just want to get the, the tower key, then you can skip this one entirely. But don't move towards the edge, because there is a third one. Just stay sort of in a circle. I think we're going to get the, the barrel. Yeah, we're going to get the barrel now. that's number two and then at the far point here is going to be number three so yeah don't go running around this area and get them all woken the last thing you need is three of these things after you you will sort of get a feel for the, the dodging obviously but uh, yeah get used to dodging round enemies because the two boss fights in here are very demanding <laughs> They're also the best though, so you will enjoy learning the bosses that are coming up. And this point at the end here, this body here is the tower key. That's the thing we came for. The rest is just gravy. Lots of it as well. To so smash all the, uh, or walk into all the, the ashen bodies. Because they drop stuff as well. But yeah, we're, not, we're almost there. We're getting towards the boss fight. We're just going to do the, the two boss fights back to back at the end once we have everything else done. So now we're going to go back. And we're going to go up. Yes, we're going to go up. So this key that we got does open that door on the left hand side. Uh, there is an item down there. Um, nothing that we need at all consequence at all. I can't remember what it is but I know it's not important. So if you want to look around now you can fully look around this place. So back up, we're in the middle again near the bonfire. Of course I'm just going to have a quick sit down. And now we're going to go into the curse room. Yes. So, full disclosure, again, I did die because uh, Forlorn turned up 
so hopefully he does it for you. Obviously, four long can turn up at any point, and it's horrendous for him to turn up while you're down here fighting things in curse. Uh, so yeah, then I did die, um, but I just quickly, obviously, just um, came back from the bonfire and carried on. So there are the stronger ones down here, and it is a cursed area. So I did put the cursed bite ring back on. Not that I'm particularly bothered because I have already died once, so curse doesn't really bother me after dying once. It's more the first time where it's a problem. So there's going to be two on the middle floor and then three enemies at the bottom. So yeah, I did just let Forlorn kill me as well. I thought oh, I'm not fighting you down here. Uh, can't. It's the, the scythe version that will come after you. So uh, yeah. Just leave him. Shouldn't come back. And he didn't. I think I get stuck in the corner here. See, I didn't want to be on the cursed side, but I, I am here. So you should be alright. Just keep going up to the top of the stairs again. Let the curse wear off. And run back in. And yeah, this guy, I forgot, doesn't die. I forgot this time. You need to run down and uh, stab the, the Dahlia thing for this guy to die. Because he's uh, powered by curse. So run down and then to the left hand side. So the main thing I'd, I got was the other enemies out of the way. You can kamikaze this if you really want to. Uh, the, the soul will stay even if you die. So if you do this and then they all come running in and kill you, don't worry because you will be able to just come back and get it afterwards with no curse. So this guy will die now because the curse has been removed. And then make sure you make always make sure to pick these up as well. They will stay there. But uh, when I first played this, I did forget to pick one up, and I was running around like mad trying to find it. And then at the back end here is Fire Snake. Another pyromancy. So this is the third and final one that we're going to pick up. To make sure you get that. And then there's one more thing. Another door here. There's one on the other side, but there's nothing in it. There's uh, old, old Radiant Life gems if you want them. And we'll go and get one more soul of Nadalia, which is up the lift again. And then it's boss time. So from here, go to the one that takes you up, which is at the end of this one here. So we're going to go up kind of where we were before. But halfway up this time. So you can see there, there's a lot, there's like you can jump down there, you can jump down there as well. Uh, lots of places you can explore and have a mess around in, but yeah, I'm just showing you exactly what you need. So we need to get to that door over there. Uh, the lift doesn't stop, so you're going to have to jump onto it as it's coming up and then straight back off it again. And there's going to be an armpit fire guy in here. And what's really fun is that there's a Nadalia that heals him. It's not full health all the time, but it is an annoying amount of health, so you're just going to need to go for it. You could also go for it and kill the Dahlia if you want. She's in the third door from the left. You can see there's kind of an aura. You can see it coming through that door there. Uh, it's healing him. It doesn't heal him very quickly, but it is enough to be annoying. So I'm just going to kill him eventually. Or you can quickly run, open the door and stab it. But there is a chance that this guy will kill you. Well, that's up to you. That was close. Out of nowhere, these attacks. They just come out of nowhere. Oh, <laughs> that was close. That's the agility that came in then. All those points in agility that saved me at that one point. That's where we put all those points just for that one point of... <laughs> not dying there. Right, so this is the final one that's kind of obscure and we have to find. The rest are easy. There's going to be four around one of the boss fights and one next to the final boss fight. So again, make sure you pick up the soul. 
and uh, have a look in these doors. I don't think there's anything behind this door. I think this is the empty one, but the rest of the doors do. Obviously, don't fall off the edge as well. Yeah, so lots. Ten Titanite shards in one go there. That's pretty handy. If we were at the start of the game. Some flame butterflies are always handy as well. And then in the chest is life ring plus three. So you will get a lot more health from wearing this thing. So if you want to put that on, obviously go for it. And I just realised when I pick the ring up that I do actually still have the curse bite on. We definitely don't need that on anymore. And now we're going to go down into the depths and take on the Fume Knight. The Fume Knight. Oh, the Fume Knight. Now, it's the sort of perfect boss fight to bring a summon in, and there are two of them. But it's also not because it gives him a lot more health, and he's really powerful and kills him really quickly. But it's the sort of perfect one because of the distraction factor. Uh, and I will use one to start with. It could arguably be better to have none and have his health half or normal, but obviously we're going to double his health by bringing in a summon. Um, so it's completely up to you, but what I like to do is get past his first phase quickly because that's the more annoying one, the one you're going to die to the most, I would say. But uh, yeah, we'll get more into that in a minute. We're going to go down and down here. There's going to be enemies that can't be killed, which is fantastic. So we're going to do a suicide run. Get the sorcery clutch ring. There is um, another place you can just jump off and have a look around. There's lots of those instances. Uh, before we get down here, we have to fight a load of guys. And again, full disclosure, I do die when we get right to the bottom. I'm not going to show the whole thing, obviously. I'll just cut. And fade but yes it's one of those fire guys again it's just a lack of concentration on those guys <laughs> those that guys every time split second so yeah that some of them have just one enemy these ones do die by the way that when I've meant said before some of them don't it's not these ones there are some others coming up afterwards though so yeah that you can see that obviously looks like it's going to break. It does break if you stand on it. And you'll just kind of fall all the way through. Because there's a breakable one, underbreakable one, underbreakable one. It doesn't kill you. You just go all the way down to the bottom. You don't miss anything, so don't worry about it. If that does happen. Well, actually, you do miss something. Uh, plus six partisan, but... <laughs> yeah, don't worry if you do miss it. Let's put it that way. So, yes, I do die as I drop down here. This is the, the final level. There is one of these guys again. It's that delay every time. It's not the fire that bothers me. I mean, they're not difficult, these guys. They're really not. It's there, that. It just... lull you into false false scent like there it was it was not it was not um a double attack so yeah it's just uh getting used to those guys anyway we're nearly there we're nearly at the uh the boss the fume knight we just got to do this kamikaze run now uh, i will show show you where the sorcery clutch ring is which can help with uh magic damage yeah, just run past it. I don't know how that didn't hit me, but okay. I'll take it. There's a few of them, so just keep going. And then to the right is the clutch ring if you want it. You're going to see me pick it up really quickly and move on because they do come in. So there, I do pick it up, honestly. <laughs> there we go. Run, run, run. And then down here. And just keep going. And there's a lift right at the end. And then when you get on the lift, get your shield up because they will still be firing at you. Like that. Okay, almost there. Nearly there. I 
and there he is. This is the Fume Knight boss fight, but I will just go and get a uh, bonfire. Definitely helpful. But we're also doing a backup save just before we'll walk in because there are still two enemies. You can see there's two of these armpit guys turning up. You don't want to have to fight them every time you die to the Fume Knight. And that will be probably quite a few times, to be honest. So I've just reset the area there. Heal everything up. I'm going to turn back human. Because there are two summons. Again, you can use them, but... It's kind of, get a feel for it. Bring them in sometimes. Only bring one in, don't ever bring two in. So this guy, or sh girl, woman, should I say, Ellie. She's useless in the fight, completely useless. Don't bother bringing her in. The reason I'm bringing her now is to help with these uh, armpit guys while I do some other stuff. So you can see these four uh, Nadalias around. There's four of them, there's two around here, and then there's two on the other side. Uh, they heal the Fume Knight, so if you come down here and take the Fume Knight on without getting rid of these first, then you can't kill him. <laughs> you can't. You'd have to literally try and keep him in the middle the whole time, and that's not going to happen. You can see even this guy's getting healed. So we'll t quickly take care of him, and then either the... You should have exactly the right amount of smelter wedges. So after this, we'll have ten of the uh, the fragments. Again, make sure you pick them up. It was one of these that I forgot originally when I first played this game. So here's number eight. Yeah, this um, Ellie, I think, yeah, Ellie it was, wasn't it? Uh, I think she's using the Sestus, which is basically punchy fists and it's completely useless against the boss fight and she'll just die really quickly and then you're stuck with extra health yeah you can see how little damage she's doing to this thing never mind the fume knight so uh, just don't bother with her you can get her to help you here I'll send her off in a minute once we're done but there's just two of these guys just use her as a quick distraction that's all this is the summon I will be using that's Carillion. He's a bit more helpful, again, if you think you can um, take the Fume Knight on alone after a few practices, then yeah, definitely don't bring a summon in, but it can help getting past that first phase, you're going to see in a minute, the first phase. Checking all these, there's only one right at the end <laughs> with anything worth grabbing. Okay, so that's 10 down. You should have 10 parts. Do a check. I am going to do a check myself. So once you pick this one up, this was the one I, I forgot originally. Um, yeah, go down and check. You should be right at the bottom there. You can see 10 fragments. Um, if you don't have 10, it means you've forgotten to pick one up. You're going to have to go and find it. And then uh, we'll go stand in front, do a backup save. Just gonna heal up. I need to send Ellie away first though. So we'll do that. Where is it? There it is. So you need the black separation crystal to send people home. Do that. You can't quit out while she's here, obviously. So send her away, do the quick backup save so you don't have to fight those two. Well, I mean, you don't have to fight them, you can run past them, but it's just easier. You keep your human form, then you're not going to burn through human effigies. So this is it, the hardest fight from Dark Souls 2. Well, maybe the Ancient Dragon might be harder, but we don't have to fight him. The hardest one we're doing anyway, the Fume Knight. So as it starts, run straight for the middle. He won't be there straight away. You can see his sword is there. He's going to appear. Uh, you can get four cheeky hits in if you want. But the, the main thing with Fume Knight is stamina management. That really is what it comes down to. You can see he has that normal sort of long sword. And then he has his big Fume Knight sword as well. He's, he does a lot of quick attacks with the, the, the long sword. And then big lazy attacks with the Fume Knight sword. 
Well, it's Fume Sword. He probably just calls it a sword because he is the Fume Knight. Um, this is why we want the distraction. There's not many openings when he is using both swords because he'll come at you with the combo with the small one then follow up with the big one there's all different timings you can't really tell what's going on until you're in the middle of the combo big lazy swings the back of the attack there the back of the uh, the big fume knight sword attack can get you as well so the idea is to just try and do yeah you can see it the back swing there will get you as well Try and dodge through that. That's when you're fighting him solo, that is literally your only opening. And he hates you healing as well. That's another thing. When it's just one-on-one, -on -one, he is going to come after you. Even when you heal. So if you back away, he'll jump across. And he does not like it at all. And what we're trying to do is get him to go into his second. Unfortunately, Carillion has died really quickly this time. He's not usually that quick. Uh, force the Fume Knight into his second phase. So keep going at his health. And you'll see him change and he'll put the short sword away and that's when things actually get easier his attacks are, are stronger but they're slower so you can read him better so you can see he has very few openings it's worth just one hit maybe two if you're feeling really brave but yeah you're dodging through one hit but only if you've got enough stamina to get out again don't over hit it's just not worth it and then when he goes to do this you can get a few hits in but back away he's probably going to hit you with this thing that is the an attack we really want him to do actually because it's really e easy to dodge through this is an attack we don't want him to do uh, if you're close to him as he does that it has an aoe and then the balls afterwards so the aoe is going to kill you if you don't hold your shield up so what we want him to do is the stab is probably one of the more annoying attacks because you'll follow up this is the most annoying one just back away and try and dodge the fireballs if you can this is the one you want him to do because you can dodge through get a good couple of hits on his back and it's a case of just learning you see his, his attacks are a lot slower and there's just the one sword to worry about now so that's why we're trying to force him or get to the second phase as quickly as possible that's another just one hit don't go for another because you need your stamina to get the hell out that's another one you need to work and again with the lazy swings as well if he keeps his sword on the on the floor and then drags it round to the left hand side he is going to go for another attack I think this is where you, yeah, you can see the AOE will take all of your stamina out and it still does a good chunk of damage as well so the one we want to look out for the most is the, the one where he swings. Now this can hurt a lot if you get this timing wrong, but it has a really generous iframe amount there. Even if with a low amount of uh, agility, it's quite easy to dodge through that. The problem with the Fume Knight is getting caught out with stamina. That is the biggest problem. Because it has big heavy hitting combos, uh, if you've got sort of a, a third of your bar full and he goes for the combo and you try to block uh, he's gonna catch you out with the last two or three hits there you can see the lazy swing off the floor be ready for that and just one don't yeah even not even follow yeah I've left myself with none then so yeah I, you can see I'm not attacking I it's just not worth it I'd rather have the stamina so don't be afraid to sort of dance with him a bit. There's no point where he's just going to go ultra and come after you. These are probably the worst thing, but again, you can dodge through them. I mean, that one, that just tracks straight after me then. Uh, yeah, he's not, you can see, he does not like you healing. He will come after you if you try and heal. That's your best attack again. And then we're just going to go, because he's going to go for the AoE. And that leaves him open. So, good luck with the Fume Knight. You will get it. It's a case of learning his moves with this one. It, out, all of a sudden, this, this guy, is compared to the rest of the bosses, makes them look very easy. Um, but yeah, you get the Crown of the Old Iron King as well if you want. Uh, not something we'll use. Once you have the King's Blessing, after you've had all three crowns from the DLC, you'll. Um, I think you can wear that and it gives you... In Curse resistance, like curse, can't hurt you at all. Uh, so yeah, we got the the Fume Knight's 
soul and we also got one of the Nadalia souls as well then so we're up to 11 now and we're just going to go and get the final one which involves fighting Sir Alon who I think actually is the, for a while my favourite was the Fume Knight but I, th I think Sir Alon is my favourite boss um, yeah good luck but again, bringing in a, a summon will double his health. You can make that fight shorter by just going in solo, but you will have to learn his first phase a lot better. And it is definitely the trickier of the two because he's a lot slower in the second one and it's uh, much easier to remember. So from here we're going to go back and we're going to go back to the main area again. We're going to take a little lift up. Go to Sir Alon. So Sir Alon's actually in a dream. It's a, a dream, another dream sequence we're doing. And this probably has the worst run back. Unfortunately, I missed that. Uh, probably has the worst run back of any boss fight. If you die, it's horrible. So we are definitely making a backup save before fighting him. Uh, and again, another fight you don't want to bring summons in. He has a lot of health to start with. So if you bring one, two in... It's just going to make it ridiculous. So no, do not bring anyone in. So I'm going to take this up. And then we're going to take this one. This is the one we took up originally to get the uh, the, the smelter wedges. Now this gate will you'll be able to open this up. Using the tower key. Now there is a uh, an invasion at the top here, you'll get invaded. Uh, you remember the, the guy you killed 30 times at the top of the Belfry Sol? That guy, but he has friends with him and they all count as one invasion. Um, yeah, hopefully you've done that as well. We are coming towards the end of this playthrough, you do need all of the farming done. So all of your Sunlight Medals and your Belfry kills. So it's this guy, it might look like there's just the one and it's that, that's it, but it's not. Uh, you're going to see that the invader has not been uh, killed after this. He will die, obviously, but uh, it doesn't tell us that. So there is the final Nadalia, but we need the Smelter Wedge first from Server Lon. So we will be back for that. Uh, and they're going to appear. So you could probably get away with just doing one at a time on the stairs. But there's one, two, three. So there's four on the stairs. Uh, and unfortunately, they've all decided bow and arrow today. Try and get close, get one to switch to a sword so he'll follow you. Haha, he may oh he didn't. <laughs> yeah, try and separate, divide and conquer. They do go down fairly quickly. The first one seems to have more he uh, health than these ones. Or, I don't know, he definitely did seem that way. Uh, but the, yeah, these together, you do need to kill them all to sort of vanquish the, the invader. They all count as one. So he's swinging around wildly trying to kill him now. There, invader banished. That's not not vanquished. Oh, it was vanquished. It's both. <laughs> Thought I read it somewhere. So there is a bonfire at the top of here. So don't worry about um, your weapon needing fixing. We're going to do that in a minute. And this is the dream sequence. This is Sir Alon's armor. Who you may notice that the Alon knights have sort of a Japanese feel to their their weaponry and the way that they attack uh, and that's because Sir Alon came from Japan as you can see he's got a big old sword there so you can go into a dream sequence now there are two summons here I'm going to bring them both in they are not coming into the fight they are going to come into this first area to help us through it now you can run all the way through this area if you know what you're doing and if you're lucky as well but I will show you sort of what to expect what enemies are here and um, how to get through it fairly efficiently uh, this is a dream sequence after all so you only have a limited amount of time here so you do need to be quick once you're in the fight with Alon you're fine but up to the point you could sort of get to the, the end and if you've not gone in and you've taken too long you'll uh, you'll leave the dream so yeah, there's uh, those guys. You can get behind every single one of them. 
but there's these guys, the, the Sir Alon, the Alon Knights running around everywhere as well. You can see they don't even do too much damage to uh, these Alon Knights, so having them in the boss fight is completely counterproductive with this one. So yeah, you can come round and get each of these if you want. But you can also kamikaze run through this area. So what you do is just completely run sh in a straight line and go for that back wall and uh, drop down the gap at the end. But no, you weren't supposed to be here. <laughs> Hitting the wall here, this is not going well. And then he's going to do the fireballs, that was close. See, they're everywhere, these knights. Nope, don't lock on. Stop. So yeah, make it nice and safe so you can get an idea of uh, what the area looks like rather than me just running through. You get an idea of uh, what's where and how many enemies there are around. If you do want to kamikaze it, you can do. Three rusted coins, I'm sure they'll come in helpful. So there is one of the electric guys, you remember these guys from um, Iron Keep have the sort of the electric sword attack. He's always going to be there and he'll follow you as well uh, as you drop down into the hole. So as, if you were running towards it just to go for the hole, which is this hole here, You'd need to dodge the salamander, so you'd dodge sort of left or right for a moment, and then uh, drop down here, and more often than not, this guy who is, they didn't kill him, they just carried on and left him, will come after you as well. So that's one area done. On to the next one. So you'd have to run all the way through here, and you have to do this every single time if you die to Sir Alon. And again, Sir Alon is the second hardest boss, I would say in the, uh, the game. He, he definitely demands the most concentration I would say along with the Fume Knight if that's how we're measuring difficulty I don't know so there are there is a Salamander underneath that's going to try and shoot you uh, repair powder here there is a weapon underneath you can go down using the stairs on the right that we just walked past uh, you don't need to I'm not going to just a case of uh, showing you what's here there's two archers on this back wall again you can just run if you can you think you can make it run all the way to the boss fog and uh, they will stop following you one or two might come after you but the majority of the ones following will stop and you'll be free to make a backup save and then uh, carry on in so that's what we're going to do now we're going to run down here and do a backup save, but before that we're going to uh, send these guys home because they were completely useless. So yeah, use the separation crystal again, send them home one at a time. Unfortunately, uh, can't do them both at the same time. And then we're going to go do uh, the backup save and then we're going to go in to Sir Alon, who I, as I was watching this fight back originally, I realised how amazing the floor looks in this in this boss arena. It's like ray tracing before ray tracing. So do the backup save and then get in there and uh, fight him. So he's Japanese. Lots of quick, swift attacks followed by. Um, pauses and there's your attack windows so you're gonna see me get knocked about a bit uh, it's it's a case of getting his his timings down and then once you've got them you can do quite well against him quite easy he is quite easy to learn and he has lots of very obvious tells and he does linger on his attacks like that very um, purposeful attacks I think that's the word I'm looking for so you want him at a distance that's what you want him to do you want him to be away from you because it will force him to do this attack, which I didn't roll through at all. Uh, and you're dodging to the to the left again. So with most of these games, it's dodge to the left. Dodge through his sword attack. One hit. I probably wouldn't even try to do two. 
So once that there's a delay on that attack, so always wait for that de delay. So if he drops his sword to the floor, he's going to do that slide. Um, there's a delay on that attack, so don't roll too early. This one here, I didn't even roll that time. Uh, or he'll do the other attack, which is that where he'll drop back and then do a stab forward. That's much quicker, so that's the normal sort of roll timing. That's the one he'll sort of favour mostly, I would say, this one. There, this one again, so if you dodge through it, get your one attack in or your heal. Only heal when you're safe like that, which you're going to see me do in a minute. Wait for an attack and then heal. Don't even bother with an attack. Ah, no, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll you'll get a feel for it. It's It looks a lot faster and hectic than it actually is because it is just one-on-one. -on -one. So if you, uh, you'll notice I always have my shield up as well. It's just kind of habit. Um, with this guy it would probably serve me well to get better and not have my shield up all the time because my uh, stamina would regenerate quicker but yeah just one hit you can see his health bar is massive he's got a lot of health that one you can just kind of walk around and get a couple hits on that one he has a lot of health so bringing a summon yeah, <laughs> just one summon is a lot of extra health so two forget about it <laughs> so there's the slide dodge through one hit let him back away sometimes he'll do the slam it's quite rare the slam he has done he does have another attack which he does usually quite often but he only does I think once at this time which is a, a curse attack which is through his sword so it's easier to dodge as well you will hear it happen before you see it uh, he does do it in a minute and again, just dodge through the left and get yourself an, uh, an attack in. So it is just a timing thing. There it is. Get yourself that one. So just thrust forward with it. Obviously, that's going to curse you if it hits. To the left. Circle round. Get those two in. So we're getting close now. Um, and it's get a bit sloppy towards the end here, really. Because I thought we could just go for it, but that was not the case. Yeah, like, <laughs> come on. What was that? The, the It did not aim on him properly then at all. And that's stamina, and that's the worst thing you can do. Whoa, he went to the wrong side. I mean, he just doesn't want to die, does he? <laughs> there we go. One hit, off the curse. So he does do it a second time. And there you go. He's... He's definitely learnable, he's definitely easier than the Fume Knight. If you've done the Fume Knight, you can do Sir Alon. Just uh, take your time and uh, try and be away from him to force him to do those longer range attacks. And there we go, that's the whole point of doing him, was to get that Smelter Wedge. That's it. Uh, a pretty cool little, little thing, if you're able to kill Sir Alon without taking a single hit of damage... He will kill himself. He will commit Sudoku. <laughs> no, he won't do a maths puzzle. Uh, sub I always forget the Sabuk. Yeah, you know the word I'm thinking. He'll kill himself in honor, with honor, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, obviously that, he's not going to do that for me. And there you go. That's the final one. So you'll it'll flash up there, Soul of Nadalia, and then again it will flash up again, Soul of Nadalia, saying that you have. The full soul now. Now we're not going to go and... There, it'll also tell you as well. Um, we're not going to go and cash it in yet. We'll do that at the cleanup at the end of the playthrough. Because we've got a few other boss souls to trade in for spells. We'll do that all at one go. But just know, once you've done that, you've done this DLC. All the DLCs are done. The next thing to do is the Dark Covenant. Which is uh, lots more little fights we've got to do against NPCs and stuff. Not the most fun, to be honest, but we need to do it. And then, from there, it's going to be the final bosses. Right, that's it for this one. Congratulations on getting this one done. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.